we got a quarter. Joseph Williams is relentless. I need a quarter, man. I just need it. I know. Yo, you, you. <laughs> He'll ask anyone, even the same person in the same day, just to get some spare change. Try to give me a bag of chips. Try to give a chip. You can try and get some change. Yeah, to get a bag of chips in the store. So how come you're panhandling here? I'm trying to give you a bag of chips. You don't got a job? I'm on social security. Your social security. So how much social security give you? They only give me thirty dollars a month. Thirty dollars a month. So uh, do you live at, where do you live right now? Most secure. Williams, like so many other panhandlers across the city of Chicago, they said they ain't got nothing. Are not necessarily homeless or penniless. Good city for children. Good city for children. They panhandle because they know it's easy money. The Magnificent Mile is lined with fancy stores that attract shoppers from all over the country. It's also a prime target for panhandlers. I've seen a lot of panhandlers here and uh, it, overall it's, it's pretty annoying because uh, you, you somewhat feel obligated, you feel bad for them, but, but you come across a handful every block. I don't think they're using it to get off the streets either. They're um, probably using it maybe for drinking or alcohol abuse. So I don't see it as being a big problem right now. So you just ignore it? Yeah. If it seems like they really need it, then of course I'll, I'll, I'll feel the need to give. Chicago needs to do something about finding a place for them or do something in order for them to put food on their table. Whatever the motive, for some panhandlers, asking people for free money has become so lucrative. i probably accumulate 30 $30? How many yeah. hours does it take you to get 30, uh, 30 bucks? Uh, three, four hours. $40, $50. 50 to 90 It's a full-time job, where in some cases, knowing the neighborhoods... The north side is always most generous. You can get along over here. Especially those are in there. That building there, nothing but uh, doctors and lawyers and you know, people like that. Just. And proper etiquette may help bring in more dollars. It's how you do it within the proper perspective. You know, you can walk up and you can say, well, excuse me, sir, I'm a little down and out on my luck. Is it possible that you can help me? It's a very intelligent way to ask for things, too. Then you got people that walk up to you like you owe them something, you know. Give me a dollar, I'll show you with that change, man. You know, up this change, man, you know. Don't nobody owe you anything. Just a few blocks over from the Magnificent Mile, the intersection of State and Hubbard is known for its vibrant nightlife and tourism. But panhandlers have become such a nuisance for businesses in the area. Each of them have their own little scheme that, you know, help the homeless or I'll draw you a picture, can I shine your shoes? The city council passed an ordinance in 2004 that made aggressive panhandling where someone feels harassed or threatened illegal in the city of Chicago. Brian Mitchell is a doorman at one of the bars. He says the ordinance is not enough. I have a woman and her husband that are out here, I would say, five to six days a week that, uh, you know, I've talked to her. She's, seen, she's very nice, very nice lady. She says she does not on drugs or anything. She doesn't seem like she is, but she says she has two high school kids. One's a senior and one's in, like, ninth grade, and they go to school every day. And, and she, uh, on slow days, makes about 100 bucks, and on fast days, makes, like, uh, makes like 300 so, so yeah. $300. On a Friday or a Saturday night for the tourist, yes. And I've seen, yeah, well, I've seen people try to come in here and try to stop them, but they don't listen. Give tens and twenty dollars just for opening up a cab door, and they, they stand right in front of it. It's a scheme. Can I get you a cab? Hey, you never seen them? Hey, I'll get this person a cab. What they do is they open it and they stand right in front of the door so you can't get in and talk to you to try to get your money. And I've seen them give. Actually, I have a friend that's a cab driver. He said he's seen somebody shell out 60 bucks one time, 20 after 20, but the guy kept talking to him. Hey, man, come on, I need some more help. You know, and these tourists and things just give them money. As I watched from several spots on this lively intersection, I clearly noticed all types of panhandling, some legal, but mostly illegal. Like this woman who aggressively went after these people for spare change until someone finally gave in. I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You want to be on camera? You want to be on camera? That's a quick question? No, I don't want to. You don't feel like you were uh, solicited right now? Probably. This man was avoiding police because he thought he was going to be arrested. You got a roll? You got a roll? Yeah, yeah. For the way he was panhandling. Oh, he is? The I other car right here on the corner right there. So, well, who are you running from? Who are you running well, from? Well, the police is their household. And what we do, it's, it's legitimate, but 
after 11 o'clock, we are not, that's what they say, we are not allowed to be selling the newspapers. Are some people scam artists? Absolutely. That's why we started Breakthrough. Our Lois Sutter leads Breakthrough Urban Ministries. She started this homeless shelter on Chicago's west side 15 years ago, when people in need began showing up at her church's doorstep. We had people coming to our church wanting handouts, and when we would check to see if their stories were legitimate, they often weren't. But mixed in there, tragically, were very heartbreaking stories of people who had very legitimate needs. Sutter says be careful when giving money to someone in need. But she also says that doesn't mean we shouldn't give it all. I've known people who have in their purses or bags or cars, uh, bags with granola bars and fruit and maybe a, a little scripture verse or um, something that can send them to breakthrough for more, more complete help. In the long run, Sutter believes forming a relationship and caring about someone on the street will leave more of a lasting impact than spare change. And also, if you know people who are out on the corner where you work or, or where you live, you know, get to know their names, find out what their stories are, you know, learn about them personally. And, you know, before long, they'll stop asking you for money because they know that you care about them. It, it's pretty rare that your dollar is really going to help to get someone off the street. Sutter says there are opportunities all around us if we are willing to see. Sometimes people will take advantage of you. Think about Jesus and, and how he was taken advantage of, and yet he continued to love and pour out love. And I think to keep our hearts soft, we need to know that, that if we're going to err, let's err on the side of mercy, because mercy triumphs over judgment. On our next podcast, Can Mercy Really Triumph Over Judgment? We'll meet Fletcher Stevens, a man who says that it can.